Welcome. In this video, I would like to address the use of Evernote as a note-taking tool during academic research. When you are assigned a research paper in one of your courses, you will likely have to conduct research in multiple locations. You may have to read government reports from a public website, or you may have to read the scholarly literature that's available to you through Google Scholar and your university library. For all of these sources, you'll need to take careful notes so that you can recall the facts and the other data that you acquired while reading those documents. You'll also need to record your thoughts and judgments about the quality of the information the credibility of the authors, the reliability of the research experiments. Where you record your notes is not critical, but having access to those notes when you need them is critical. And this is where Evernote can really shine. Because data stored in Evernote will be available on each of your digital devices. For example, I re, uh, use a MacBook Pro here at my desk. I have an iMac next to me. I also have an iPad, an iPhone. I have a few other laptop computers around the office. My Evernote database is available on all of these devices all of the time. It automatically synchronizes among my devices. So the notes that I take in Evernote are available to me regardless of which device I have at hand. And this is why Evernote can be so useful to your academic research. It allows you to have ready access to your notes regardless of which device you have at hand. Also, the full text search functionality of Evernote can be really useful when you need to find notes that you've taken weeks, months, maybe even years ago. For example, within your major, you likely take multiple courses that could benefit from having access to the same information. Being able to find the notes that you took last year could be a little bit difficult if you took your notes on paper. Also, any digital files that you attach to a note in Evernote also become searchable using the Evernote software. So it's possible to search within a Microsoft Word document or an Adobe PDF file that's been attached to one of your research notes. I think you'll find Evernote to be particularly useful during your academic research. And I'd like to show you a few tricks in the use of Evernote here in this video. Let's get started. Here I've opened a website from the United States government that addresses uh, social media. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to demonstrate researching material for social media, uh, although the topic of my searches is actually irrelevant to the use of Evernote. So on this web page, as I look at it, I see a few terms that I think might be important and might warrant some future research so I'm going to make note of them. I've opened an Evernote window in which I can then make my notes.
And then just for a bit of clarification within my notes, I'll make those bulleted items. Now, as you read this web page, you may not think the words that I found to be particularly salient, but I'm, I've chosen them primarily as an example of collecting data from a web page and recording it in Evernote. Just as if I had um, my spiral notebook and my pencil, I might make notes to myself about items that might require future research. Here I've opened a web page to Google Scholar and searched for Paperwork Reduction Act, one of those terms that I noted from reading the government web page. And the first item I find is, um, looks to me to be a Law Journal article about uh, the Paperwork Reduction Act of 1995. So now I'm going to make some notes in Evernote. I'll return to my bulleted list and add an indented bullet so I can make some notes about this, the information that I glean from reading this PDF file. Let's see, it's also known as the PRA. Uh, from 1980, antecedents to the Federal Reports Act of 1942. So just right here in the very first few sentences of this law review article, I find information that the Paperwork Reduction Act was uh, signed into law in 1980, but that it has antecedent legal requirements that date all the way back to the Federal Reports Act of 1942. Now, I know nothing about the Federal Reports Act. Maybe it would be of use to return to Google Scholar or my uh, university's library and research that topic. So to remind myself to research that, I'm going to identify this with a color so that it's just a little mnemonic to me to remind me uh, to go research the Federal Reports Act. Let's see what else I can learn about the Paperwork Reduction Act. Okay, it was enacted in 1980, amended in 1986, and in 1995. Mm -hmm. It has a codification. It was reenacted in total, um, not merely. Ah, okay, so this is important. 1995 was a recodification, a rewriting of the act, not just minor modifications. And let's see, what does it do? It performs a rather astonishingly wide ranging array of oversight functions related to information resources in the federal government. Okay. So it applies to the uh, federal, U.S. federal government. Oop, I better turn off my color here. And it is uh, broad in scope. And I see another term with which I'm not familiar. Uh, here in this paragraph. For instance, the act carves out an oversight role for the OIRA on such crucial topics as 
how agencies disseminate information. Okay, OIRA is the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs. And so OIRA, Office of Information and Regulatory I'm sorry for speaking while I'm typing. All right. Now, I'm going to stop at this point because you don't need to see me taking notes. I just want to demonstrate how I could use Evernote to first find some information on a government website about social media. As soon as I started reading that information on the government website, I came up with terms that I didn't recognize, such as the Paperwork Reduction Act. And from there, rather than following the hyperlink right here on the government website, I went to the scholarly literature to see what I could learn about the Paperwork Reduction Act. Um, I don't assume that a website produced by the federal government for the general population will have sufficient detail, um, qualification, clarification of the information about the Paperwork Reduction Act that I might need in order to make arguments within an academic paper. For the data necessary to make my more complete academic arguments, I moved quickly over to the scholarly literature and found that article from the Law Journal. Now, I've logged into my university library. And again, I searched for the phrase Paperwork Reduction Act. Notice my search criterion is included within quotation marks so that the phrase Paperwork Reduction Act is sought, not individually the words paperwork and reduction and act. I'm looking for the phrase Paperwork Reduction Act. And the first item I find is, um, well, it's on topic. So I'm going to open the PDF file. It's in a magazine called Regulation, and it again confirms that it's 1980s U.S. legislation and a little bit of history. It's been amended since 95. But notice here, this article describes the Paperwork Reduction Act as having been mod or amended in 1995. But what we learned from the law article was that it wasn't just amended, it was actually recodified, as in rewritten. So this source is less precise in its description of the modifications that took place in 1995 in regard to the Paperwork Reduction Act. And then it goes on to say, further, the number of areas in which information collections are required has increased. Before 1995, collections such as the census and tax documents did exist, and the government added mandatory collections from the Department of Homeland Security and agencies charged with implementing the 2010 Affordable Care Act. So, it appears that there have been modifications to the Act, or at least the scope of the Act's effects have expanded, or... Um, even after 1995. And that's probably good information. So, but I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to take this text, select it, copy it. Now I'm on a Mac, so I used Command C to copy the selection. On a Windows computer, um, you could use Control C. And 
I'm going to copy the information here into Evernote. And because I still had my bulleting on, it comes in misformatted. So now I can copy that text from here into my notes without the bulleting. And I'm going to put this in a quotation. And just so I remember from where I got this, I'm going to make a note to myself that it came from Shapiro, written in 2020. And then I would also save a copy of this, this PDF document into my Zotero database so that I have ready access to the PDF file even once I've disconnected from the internet. I hope this introduction to the use of Evernote as a note-taking device in the course of an academic research activity is useful to you. I recommend strongly taking digital notes rather than handwritten notes. Now, you might argue with me that uh, you prefer to take handwritten notes on your tablet uh, because that way you get the best uh, parts of handwriting and digital recording. That's fine. You can use Evernote even for handwritten notes or at least you can use Evernote to store copies of your digital handwritten notes. But using Evernote now, as early in your academic progression as possible, will give you greater opportunity to learn how to use the software well. Take advantage of it now using skills that you have and explore the options that are available to you in the more advanced functions of Evernote and see if they will serve you even better. I wish you the absolute best in your academic note-taking. I hope you use Evernote and you use it well. I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Bye for now.